look at what it means to serve the Lord yesterday. And uh, we agreed on a number of things. It is my prayer, it is my prayer that this series will help many of you that are within the house and that are outside the house to get to understand what serving God is. As I said yesterday, that there is, there is something about God that needs to be understood. Now, the religious understanding of God that many people have, have made them expect from God what God is not. Why are you people sitting there? There is space here. Can you occupy this space? Don't get tired of arranging in the house of God. Sit over here. Take over this space. So the religious mindset that people have about God has made people expect wrongly from God. That's why the Apostle Paul in his cry shouted that I may know him. Because many people have a half-baked mindset about God. Many of us have what we think, who we think God is, which is different from who God really is. You have heard statements like, Mungu habagui chochote. And those statements look very real and they look good. They look comfortable. We have this mindset that God takes everything. He's God. So he accepts everything. He's God. So he endorses everything. He's God. So he accepts everyone. He's God. But it is wrong. One of the most powerful things about God that you need to understand is the fact that God does not treat people the same. That should sink into your heart. As you are seeing the whole of this world, you are saying, God for us all. The truth is, he's not for us all. He causes his reign to reign on the good and the bad because it is his nature, but it doesn't mean he's for everyone. There are people enjoying the rain just because God wanted the rain to get to a righteous man. But if not, that there was no righteous man, God would not allow the rain rain on them. There is something about God that needs to sink deep into us. God is not for us all. Let, just get that out of your mind. God does not treat people the same. He doesn't look at all of us the same. And I'll show you that. I'll prove that to you. I think it should be Malachi chapter 4, if I'm not wrong. And then you'll come back and tell the difference between those who serve God and those who don't serve God. Can you get that and put it there? Then he will make a distinguishing difference between those that serve him and those that don't serve him. You'll be able to come back and discern. God makes a difference between those that serve him and those that don't serve him. So if you are not serving God, there are things you are not qualified for. Even though you are born again. Even though you are saved, if you are not serving God, there are things you are not qualified for. There are things that will not happen to you even if you cry. Why? Because you are not serving God. And you can be saved and not serve God. You can be religious and not serve God. You can claim to be born again. Yes, you are born again, but there are things you will never see because you don't serve God. Can we look at this? This is which verse is this? I wish you'd use your heads and minds in the house of God to realize you can't hide the screen behind people. 
What do you understand by serving God? Then you shall again discern between the righteous you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one that does not serve God. God says there will be a difference between them that can be seen. Which means there are things you will not see if you are not serving God. There are things that will not happen to you if you are not serving God. It will be very obvious and very open when we look at your life, we will be able to tell this does not serve God. And this serves God. Let's go, around, let's go back to around verse 15. So now we call the proud blessed for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even turn God and go free. <laughs> then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Please stay on verse 17. There's something I want to tell you. Coming to church will not equal a breakthrough. Looking pitiful for a pastor to pray for you will not help you. After you are saved, there are things if you are not doing, you are finished. You can be saved for 30 years and cry for those 30 years until you understand what I'm teaching you now. Because nobody taught you this. You are taught running from meeting to meeting looking for a prophecy. I see you getting married. Those are the things you are pursuing. I see you being lifted. I see you getting a financial breakthrough. And nobody showed you how to get the cream of God on your life. Nobody taught you how to remain with God and raise an altar that cannot be shaken in your house. That you can wake up at midnight when your child is dying and not call any pastor and say in the name of the Jesus that I serve, come out and you come to church to testify, not to tell us that the baby died. But we are raising believers that will need a pastor in the morning, a pastor in the afternoon, a pastor in the night, a pastor to touch his wife, a pastor to go and urinate, a pastor for everything, because we want to chain them around us so that we can have an income. Keep emphasizing the devil to them so that you can control them and drive a good car. Convince them that unless you come to me, you cannot be free. But there's a generation of ministers that are out to give you God. There's a generation of ministers that want you to know God. That wants you to have a deep covenant walk and relationship with God that can never be challenged. This is not the Christianity that Jesus and the apostles left us. It's not the Christianity of you shall receive a job. People lining up everywhere to be touched with oil. That is not what they left. Philip was not a preacher. Philip was a believer that was serving tables. He was one of the deacons appointed to check if the widows are fed or not. Philip only sat around the apostles. When he came down to Samaria, he preached that the stronghold of Samaria, the witch that controls Samaria, got born again while a deacon was preaching. A deacon was doing what archbishops cannot do now. Because they were given the right foundation. They were shown God. They were not shown to follow miracles and follow breakthroughs and follow all these things. They were shown God. There's something that when you find God will live in your house. There's something that when you find no man can bewitch you. There is something that when you find God will make you distinguished among men. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, being the jewel of the Lord, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son. What kind of a son? A son 
that serves him. So God is not going to make everybody their jewel. If you lie confessing the whole night, I'm the apple of the Lord's eye, the devil will still slap you in the face. There's something that makes a man God's jewel. There's something that makes a man the apple of God's eye. There's something that makes God become jealous over a man, even when the man looks like he has many weaknesses. There's something that makes God protect. God does not protect everyone. He's not committed to everyone. They are Christians and we shout, Hey! Hey! Jesus! And the cow will roll and their buttocks will be at the gate. Their head will be the other side. Their intestines will be scattered. And heaven will move on like nothing has happened. Angry at the devil. Not just angry at the devil. I'm angry at stupid Christianity. Where are believers that can dare Satan? Where are believers that don't have to pray because they are embarking on a journey? All this, let's pray. We are going for a journey. Religion. All this, let's bless the food before we take it. Start praying long prayer as it works on our body, as it protects us. What is all that? All these children are going back to school. Father, we smear them by the blood. No evil will see them. What is all that? You don't understand. If you don't know God, you'll think this is arrogance. What is that? <laughs> it's something you need to understand. When you have God, you know you have God. When you have God, you become a mobile altar. What other prayer are you praying? That Lord, as your servant is getting on the road, let's anoint the car. Let's speak the blood of Jesus. Let's put oil on the road as a sign they'll arrive safe. The plane I get into is safe. No need for prayer. It is safe. You understand? These are not empty words. If you are empty, don't repeat them. The neighborhood where I live is safe. Why? Because I live there. There was an accident in the sea that took almost, they were in an accident for almost a month. Let me give it a good example. A car is rolling for a whole month. Leave alone a car has rolled for five minutes. You have shouted Jesus to me on a mungu. I want you to imagine a car rolling for a whole month. And you are in there. A whole month of living expecting to die. There was a shake up in the sea and Paul was there. And when many days had passed, please, I'm coming back to this. Let's go to Paul. And when many days had passed and we had neither seen star or even the moon and all hope of ever getting saved was gone. The apostle Paul stood up. Paul stood up in the middle of that fiasco. And Paul said this. Now look at it. Acts 27. Somebody shout, I want to serve God. I can't hear you. Say it again. I want to serve God that Satan will know that I serve God. When Job served God, the devil knew it. The devil told God, you have protected him. And of course, God told, God told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, sir, you have protected him. When you serve God, you don't need introductions to the devil. You don't need to talk to 27 demons. I'm sorry to speak like that. I, was, I sent a video to some of my pastors, as some, one of the people that wanted us to visit them. So I came to the house and I, I looked at them and I asked them, so what do you think is your problem? My man of God, I don't think something is right. But I told the woman, okay, I have come. The demons that have been torturing the woman began to confess by themselves. There was no keyboard, there was no song. They, they, now, we took a video, then we were showing her after she came back to herself. So we showed her. He said, that is not me. I said, this is you. This is what you've been living with. In your house. The other three sisters, look at it. Who are these? This is your, my sister. I asked them, are you born again? Only to be surprised that even the one that invited us is not born again. Then I led the whole family to Christ. Why? They saw power. 
all of them saved. I asked her, Ronga is very far. She said it's very close. If you carry power wherever you are, will be close. There's no far place. Listen. Now, those are the believers you are preaching to today. Those are the people you are collecting tithe from. <laughs> Some are seated here that don't even understand what salvation is. He doesn't know whether he's saved or he's not saved. All he knows, Maisha Mempiga Kajikuta Nanya Yema. Look at this. Look at this. But after a long abstinence from food, then Paul stood up in the midst of them and said, now, can, can you give me the exact verse? And when all hope was gone of them ever having to be saved, they were not expecting to be saved. All hope was gone. They knew they were going to die. Okay, can we pick it from verse 20? You, can you get the exact verse? Now look at this. Now that is Paul speaking. Let's go back a little bit. Verse number 20. That's what I'm looking for. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days. Somebody say many days. And no small tempest beat on us. And all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. But after a long abstinence from food, then Paul stood up in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me not to have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. 23. Verse 23. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God whom I belong and whom I serve. That situation did not need Christians. It needed men who serve God. And this is what the angel told Paul. Do not be afraid, Paul. The angel called him by name. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those that sail with you. God has given you the life of every man in this boat. They are safe because you are here. Who can God speak to like that? God telling you, I've given you the life of your, all your family members. No one will die this year because you are in that family. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Look at the next verse, 26. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Listen to me. God granted Paul all those that sailed with him. The ship was safe because Paul was there. After almost a whole month of an accident. And hope is gone that people are going to die. A man was found there that is serving God. Say, they are stood by me, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. It is your service that establishes how much God owns you. It is your service that proves God owns your life. What is it? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my God. The other Jehovah, my God. Jehovah, my God. Will even if you hear the way some people pray, you get discouraged about Christianity. Father God, Father God. Jehovah God, Jehovah God. Jehovah Lord, Jehovah Lord. You are my Father, my Father. Are you the one that ascended? Are you the one that descended? Are you not on the throne? What kind of rubbish is that? Is it an idol you are talking to, God? Jehovah God, Jehovah God, Jehovah Lord, Jehovah Lord, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. Je you, oh, the only thing you know is Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Lord, Jehovah Lord, Jehovah God, Jehovah God, Jehovah Father, Jehovah Father, Jehovah Father, Jehovah Father. Rakabaka, rakaba, rakabaka, rakaba. I shall not lose my job. Jehovah God, Jehovah God. I wish I'm there to slap you back into order. Wasting the name of the Lord. When men who serve God speak, there is a way they speak. 
Let's analyze the, what Paul said again from verse 22. Give it to me in the message translation. Raise your hands and say, Lord, inject in my system the grace to serve you like I've never served you before. I say it again, Lord, inject it in my system. The grace to serve you like I've never served you before. Kingdom service. Serving God. We're coming back to Malachi. Then I drop what I prepare tonight. Raise your hands and say, I'll serve God. Serve God. We are not called to have an idol that we press like an ATM machine to give us money and jobs. We are called to give our lives to this thing. We are called to have God consume us. We are called to lose who we are that he may live. Look at this. It had been many days since we had seen either sun or stars, wind and waves were battering us <laughs> unmercifully and we lost all hope of rescue. I love that. With our appetite for both food and life gone. Stay there. Appetite. He appetite to na maisha. Ni vile bado jaona stone. With our appetite for both food and life gone. Paul took his place in our midst and said, Friends, you really should have listened to me back in Crete. We could have avoided all this trouble and trial. But there is no need to dwell on that now. From now on, things are looking up. I can assure you that there will not be a single drowning among us. Although I can't say as much for the ship. The ship itself is doomed, but we will not die. Last night, God's angel stood at my side. An angel of this God I serve. He, he, there's a way he put it. He didn't just say God. He said, this God I serve saying to me, don't give up Paul, you're going to stand before Caesar yet. And everyone sailing with you is also going to make it. The reason they're going to make it is because they're sailing with you. If you are not here, they're dead. The only man God is seeing here is a man that is serving God. The reason this place is safe is because there is a man that serves God. To marry a husband that doesn't serve God is like committing suicide. To raise children that don't serve God is like raising them for tragedy. To be the one praying and up and down, busy, busy with God while your children are busy with cartoon. They know nothing about God. They never fast and pray. They know nothing about the God of their father. You don't even know the Sunday school they attend. You go one place, your wife goes another place, the kids go another place, you are in trouble. May the zeal to serve God consume your life. I said, may the zeal to serve God consume your life. I said, may the zeal to serve God consume your life. I pray may your life find meaning in God. May your generation find meaning in God. May your children find meaning in God. May the generation after you find meaning in God. Raise your hands and shout hallelujah. Say amen, you can't say. Give an offering, you can't give. Sing to the Lord, you can't sing. Jump up, you can't jump. You are a liability. There are messages that cannot be taught to massage you. There are messages that come to provoke you. You need to be radical for God. If you don't know God, the economy will destroy you. If you don't know God, PhD holders are now begging with PhD. Life has become upside down. Professors are selling pineapples in their range of us. If you don't know the God that can send a raven to feed a prophet, you are finished. We are living in times when anybody can lose their job anytime. We are living in days that darkness will cover the earth, but the glory of God will arise over them that know God. You better know God. You better serve God. You better give God priority in your life. The company is stealing your time from God. You can wake up one morning and it is no more. No God. This is not a message for likes and shares on Facebook. This is a message for the redeemed of God. The chosen ones of God. It's not a message to have everybody on board. 
is a message for those that will make up their minds. As Elijah said, for how long will you battle between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. I don't know how to decorate it for you. If, if you need God, listen. If you needed a breakthrough, but you have no need for God, go home. Even God doesn't pamper people. All this pampering, oh, we just love you. You may not say amen. You may not pray. Ah, are you hypertikani hapa? Not on this page. Somewhere else. So dear friends, take heart. I believe God will do exactly what he told me. Quickly, let's go back to Malachi. So God makes a distinction between those that serve him and those that don't serve him. Being born again does not mean you serve. You are serving God. The one hour you are spending here in the evening after giving the government all your time and your life does not mean you are serving God. People say, no, I want to serve God after they are, dis they are diagnosed with cancer. I just want to serve God. I just want to serve God. After life has wasted you, you have given birth the best strength of your days. Now you want to give God dilapidated, diluted days of your life. I want you to give God the best days of your life. When you can still preach ten times a day. So that the day I have to ordain my grandchildren while sitting on a wheelchair, I am fulfilled. I'm not sitting on a wheelchair because I'm sick, but because I'm too weak and tired, I'm getting ready to go home, releasing the mantle. Not giving God your days after usherati mekuuma mekuuma kaswende mekumaliza ulimwengu ya usherati aikuitaji tena. Even prostitutes, even if you pay them, they don't like you anymore. Then now when you are useless, you come to the house and say, I want to serve God. And that's really like, now nah, I want to serve God. <laughs> what nonsense and rubbish is that? Give God the best days of your life. See, you can't even see the people who are in the market. Even dogs look at you and they disappear. Hata ukiwe kwa pale fisi ya wezi kakukujia. Fisi wezi kakukula. Sasa nyo nakuja wala saga. Saini kia nuka hawa. Nitatulikia mungu. Nitatulikia mungu. I will serve God. When I still have my days, when I still have my strength, when I still have my energy, when I can run for God, when I can affect a generation for God, raise your hands and say, Lord, it is time. I want to serve you with my life. Serve God when you still have your beauty. Wakati badu nezavaa na vijana waseme, ay, hata musichana kama hati anayenda church, haki splendid to honor you, church. Ha, ay, ha, ay. Si hati umechapa mbaka kwa este. Vijana wakikwana wana kusalimio kama ye. Vado wana kwa anga. Wasalimie church. Jyo sasa umepata wafunua ya kutumikia mungu. Ay! You forgot something. When I say ay, you also say ay! Ay! Serve God. To make your mungu na ujana ulionai. To make your mungu kama badu na zava suti na watu angali asame wewe ni mchungaji. Hey, hata mimi na natamani kuto make your mungu. To make your mungu kwa na meno. Si atu wakati meno zimeisha kuaba. Yona kujio kifungua kuna fukuza wa shirika yona zaidi ya kujia. Kila department ukienda, watoto wana, wana shituka shituka. <laughs> May the Holy Spirit help us. <laughs> Jawa yana hizo vituko. Sasa mtu anajua kwa useless ni atataka kutumikia mungu. Wengine ule mtoto wako mentally retarded ndiyo wanaeta kanisani ya tumikie mungu. Ule anakili hapa na uya naenda Harvard. Nakuni ule ule mwenye hashiki. Yona pastor anaza kuja Bible school. 
<laughs> Mungu anapewa hizo vitu. <laughs> Sije zimekataliwa ndugu yangu. Hati yetu naona ni kama ni pasta. Na kutoa wameanza kumuisha mchungaji. Hati pasta wetu kuja wewe unajua wewe utakuwa mhubiri. Hati Mungu ndiye anapewa hizo vitu kama hizo. Give God your most brilliant child. Hannah gave God her Samuel. The child that opened her womb. Mary gave God her Jesus. A child that made her be spoken of. A child that was a treasure. A child that turned her world upside down. That's the child that she gave God. Moses' mother gave Moses. The Bible says when the mother, the child was beautiful to be behold. That is what Moses' mother gave God. Where is it when you have to Mungu? Hati huyo na hapana huyo pastor huyo ni administrator huyo ndio nataka niachie mashamba Give God Let your children know that there's nothing that can be compared to serving God A degree is an afterthought A PhD is just a by the way May you make serving God look so valuable to a generation that they will see value that we place on God Look at this. Let's read this. Then you shall again discern. Can we look at verse 17 one more time of Malachi? Uh, then you shall again, they, they, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Look at verse 18. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. In other words, I will make such an open difference between those that serve God and those that do not serve God. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, mungu ameweka value flani kwa watu ambao na mutumikia. Na kuna vitu slafanyika kwa maisha yao. Muna zakuwa the same church, but there will be something about them that is not about others. Serve God. So yesterday, I showed you four things about what it means to serve God. Let's run through that very quickly. Shout I hear. And number four, I say, to serve God, ladies and gentlemen, is to be of help in the things of God. To be of help in the things of God. It means you assist and support that which God is doing. Luke chapter 8, put it there. You assist and support that which God is doing. Even Jesus, as he preached on this earth, the mission that he carried out was assisted. You must make up your mind that if I cannot preach, I will help the preaching of the word of God. If I cannot take a microphone, I will be a pillar behind men that hold microphones. Now it came to pass afterward that they went through every city and village preaching and bringing bad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with Jesus. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod Steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. Can you give it to me in the message translation? If you can't hold the microphone, rally behind a man that holds the microphone. It's a way to serve God. To serve God is to be of use to the kingdom of God. To allow the kingdom of God to use your money, use your resources, use your finances, use your children. Mtoto wako mwingine is heading the youth department. Mtoto wako mwingine is the youth leader in the university. Mtoto wako mwingine is heading an evangelistic team. Mtoto wako mwingine is heading the Dorcas ministry. Assisting others. Learning how to give to the less fortunate. That is serving God. Serving God is not just yelling with the microphone. There are those yelling with the microphone that God is not even aware of what they are doing. Mungu anauliza mbigu na huya napika kelele ni nani? Hati baba wanasema ni mtumishu wako. Si mjui. Look at this. He continued according to plan. Traveled town after town. Village after village. Preaching God's kingdom. Spreading the message. The twelve were with him. Jesus never traveled alone. The twelve were with him. There are also some women in their company who had been healed of various evil afflictions and illnesses. 
Mary, the one called Magdalene, from whom seven devils had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's manager, and Susanna, along with many others who used their considerable means to provide for the company. After a demon leaves you, rise up and help the same man cast out more demons from other people. A demon doesn't leave you to be on Facebook arguing the whole day. It will come back again. Now, I'm coming back to this. And after Peter's mother-in-law was healed, she rose up after the healing and served them. You are not healed to go and yell in your village like a drunkard. You are not healed to go and watch television. Every healing that God gives you requires that you serve God. Every demonic spell on your life that God breaks requires that you serve God. Every financial breakthrough that God gives you requires that you serve God in return. When God gives you a husband, you take service to another level. It's not to stay at home and watch TV. That man of God, the Lord has done it for me. We are not resting from morning to evening. We are now married, man of God. We can't go for service. God is watching you. Serve God. Park your Range Rover outside there and serve God. Look at this. This was Peter's mother-in-law. Pick it from verse 37. Of Luke 4. And the report about him went into every place in the surrounding region, 38. Now, he rose from the synagogue and entered Simon Peter's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. This, Peter always had a problem. Now his mother-in-law is living with him. And the mother-in-law the, the mother is sick with high fever. I don't know what Peter did. Whether it was the temperature of the house, I don't know. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon Peter's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. And they made request for him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Hallelujah. After healing, you rise and serve. The reason we don't see much of the manifestations of the Spirit of God is because not many people want to serve God. God already knows their intentions. When God gives you a promotion, you find a way to serve God. He arose and served them. So what is serving God? Being of use in the agenda of God. To be of help in the things of God. To support God's work. You've seen it in Luke chapter 8. Becoming a hand of support in the work of God. Making God's work pleasant and bearable. There are pastors that are suffering. You want to serve God. You can make their lives pleasant and bearable. One time God spoke to me. I'm a pastor. But God spoke to me. Get eight pastors that are not living well. Struggling and living in small houses. Tell them to shift into spacious houses. And pay their rents until the day. I will give them a house. Let me ask you a question. When a man of God was living in a single room. Gets into a three bedroom home. That has a compound. And the house is furnished. And all he has to do is to pray and serve God. And you take care of the rent. Will you pray for your rent? That's what it means to serve God. To make God's work bearable. There are some that have made God's work unbearable in ministries. Pastor Kim Kumbuka, Pastor Nalia. There are people in churches that have said, as long as we are here, we'll deal with this man. They are also serving Making God's work pleasant and making God's work bearable. In Romans 16, from around verse number 3, the Apostle Paul begins to mention some men and some women 
that made God's work bearable for him. I pray for you. May you make God's work pleasant. May you make God's work bearable. May those that play equipment play in joy because you are faithful. May the agenda of God prosper because you are faithful. That is what we call serving God. Serving God. Look at this. May your name be mentioned. May preachers climb mountains calling your name. May your name go into different, different dimensions of life. Not because of your wickedness, but because of your mercy. And may it instill the names of your children in the places of mercy. Look at this. So Paul says, greet Priscilla and Aquila. We never have these kind of names nowadays. All we have is a Bonventure. Brian Dawn. That's, that's the trouble we're having in this generation. But look at people that serve God. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Paul called them my fellow workers in Christ. They were working for Christ. Paul says they risked their own necks for my life. To whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles are thanking them. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. They give up their house for church. Greet my beloved Epanatus, who is the first fruits of a car in Christ. Look at verse 6. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Look at the names in the Bible. Epanatus. You no longer give your children such kind of beautiful names. Epanatus. We have, <laughs> we have nicely decorated names with weird demons. Paul says, greet Andronica, and Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note, these were great apostles, who also were in Christ before Paul was saved. What were their names? Andronicus. <laughs> Paul says, greet them. You have not seen Brian Don. Panatus Andronicus, Priscilla, Aquila, those guys were worth mentioning. Let's take it in the message translation. These are guys that made God's work bearable. May no pastor be weeping with your name. May you not become an agent of Satan in churches. May you not leave any church you leave, you leave smoke rising, fire on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say amen. Say hello to Priscilla and Aquila who have worked hand in hand with me in serving Jesus. They once put their lives on the line for me. And I'm not the only one grateful to them. All the non-Jewish gatherings of believers also owe them plenty. When churches owe you, when men of God owe you for the things you have done, when the children of ministers owe you for the things you have done. When widows, when, when pastors widows, a woman that was married to a man of God and the man of God died, that 100 of them, when the, 100 of them prays and fasts, when they remember what you did after their husbands died, you can't be an ordinary man. People are shameless. A husband will die as a pastor and lead the wife. And a team of men that are married will rise up within that congregation and say, we will deal with this woman. And you expect your children to have a future. Have mercy for once. Have mercy for once. Understand what it means to serve God. Look at this. To say nothing of the church that meets in their house. Hello to my dear friend, Epenetus. He was the very first Christian in the province of Asia. Hello to Mary. What a worker she has turned out to be. Hello to my cousins, Andronicus and Junius. We once shared a jail cell. They were believers in Christ 
before I was. Both of them are outstanding leaders. It's called serving God. Hello to Ampliatus, my good friend in the family of God. <laughs> Pastor number nine. <laughs> Hello to Urbanus, our companion in Christ's work, and my good friend, Stachis. Hello to Apelles, a tried and true veteran in following Christ. Hello to the family of Aristolubus. Hello to my cousin Herodion. Hello to those Christians from the family of Narikus. <laughs> Go back to that bus and get names for your children. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, from verse number 16 to verse number 18, the Apostle Paul mentions a man called Onesiphorus. And this is what he has to say about Onesiphorus. He said, the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus. Not just to Onesiphorus himself, but to his house. The Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus. For he often refreshed me. And was not ashamed of my chains. Verse 17. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously, and he found me. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me when I was at Ephesus. It is called serving God, making God's work bearable. Making God's servants find rest because God has blessed you. Can I hear somebody say amen? It is to be of relief in the kingdom of God. Serving God is rescuing and saving situations in the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, what does it mean to serve God? It means God is benefiting from you. We have a generation that were taught how to benefit from God. But do you know that the God we want to benefit from also wants to benefit from us? When a man begins to serve God, it means heaven is benefiting from the man. It means that angels are benefiting from his house. It means that God himself is gaining certain advantages from the life of the man. The man is serving God. Not writing very big billboards. My prayer needs flat pastor. You have everything that you need from God. But the question I'm asking is this. What is God gaining from your life? Did you know that God gains from men? And did you know that God will never be part of anything he doesn't gain from? He can't be committed to it. Look at this. In Philippians chapter 1, from around verse number 23, the apostle Paul tells us the reason he could not die is because heaven was gaining from his life. So Paul begins to speak and hear what Paul has to say. I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Paul desire to die. When you meet God, when you see heaven, you'll never want to be here. You'll never fight for a ministry. Most people who keep telling us they went to heaven, then come back and begin to insult people, they fainted. You know you can faint and see stars and then you wake up and think you have gone to heaven. When you go to heaven, where? I'll show you where Paul says he was taken to the third heaven. The things he saw there cannot be described. There are things he had and saw that he's not allowed to say. All these people that claim they went to heaven come back and write a big book. I was taken to one a place where, where all the false prophets will be put by God. Then they begin to mention the names of the people they don't like that have bigger ministries than their ministries. Jealousy repackaged in the name of I went to heaven. When you go to heaven and come back, your presence will make a sinner weep. They'll feel the love of God. You must be able to tell there's a difference between spirit mar luswa, the spirit of luswa. Inainara luswa, momedo mumai luswa. 
And now you think you are a prophet. I will explain. Yani we ni mdumu pere pere, ukaongeza na biblia, so unajita prophet. Una roho ya kukriticize watu. So ukaongezea na biblia kidogo, haiku kutoka vizuri. So umeikulify in the spirit of discernment. Unajua nguo za kibingu na nguo ambazo si kibingu. Unajua miguu zenye si mbingu na miguu zenye si mbingu. Kuna watada naturally wamebarikiwa na nyuma. Hata avai nini ako na nyuma. Hiyo imefanya message yako. Wengine hata nakiangalia ninaona na wewe kama ulienda mbinguni umeonaje? Ulisikia wapi? What is all this rubbish? Those are the things you are preaching. You criticize everything. If you see an altar with lights doing shoo, 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 it's a spirit. If you see a choir that wears red and black, Lucifer. If you see a pastor with a bangle on his hands, anayenaka kuzimu. Ah, mtawabia. Nilieta mpaka binguni. Na hiyo binguni unaongea hukai kama hiyo binguni. You are bitter, frustrated. You have the spirit of Lucifer. You need to be saved. You need to experience the love of God. People leave your services more hateful than the than listen, listen to me, preachers, listen to me, ministers, listen to me, those of you who are small enough to listen to me. If your message is causing more division than unity, if your message is making people suspect their parents, if your message is making women disrespect their husbands, if your message is Producing a people that cannot be managed. A riotous group of people even in a place of work. You are sponsoring witchcraft, not the gospel. Write it down. If after you preach in a town for a while, your church members don't respect any pastor. You are the only pastor. You are the only apostle. You are the only true man of God. Be careful what you are preaching. So Paul says I'm hard pressed between the two having a desire to depart and be with Christ which will be far much better. Nevertheless to remain in the flesh is more needful not for me but for you. And being confident of this I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Paul is saying this. The reason I'm alive, if I'm alive, men will progress in the faith. In other words, heaven is benefiting from my life that even if I want to die, I cannot die. Serving God is God benefiting from your life. When robbers have gunned up to kill you, a question is asked in heaven. If that man dies, who will take care of this and that? If that man dies, wale mayatima ishirina saba, watabaki bila baba, enjo Michael, do something. Don't think God is stupid, he just gives people long life like that. Long life is the only thing God does not give in advance. He gives by analysis. He will check what you have done with the first 30. We'll go through the first 30. You are there praying. Shada, shadaga, shadaga. I shall leave. Then God will check the first 30. And say, if 30, nothing. Okay, let's try him with another 20. Then they add you 20. God told Solomon, if you walk in my statutes like your father David did, then I will prolong your days. Not that I've already prolonged. I will. Sijafanya. Na kuangalia kwanza. God looks at how you have rioted with 40. Said, look at tragedy. If we add another 40, we are in trouble. Cut him off. Whew, you are gone. When Satan has planned to take a life, heaven calls a conference. And they say, are you seeing those 53 widows? Hmm. Those are God's wives. Who is keeping them that well? The same man 
that guns are being planned to take away his life. And God says, do everything that is possible to ensure nobody takes his life. Why? Because heaven is benefiting from him. In the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the Lord, me, my children, my dogs, good night, Lord. Long life is not your portion. Nobody benefits from you. Pesa yako umefunga kwa inawea. Ukenda kwa ibada unasema, unajua sometimes people have a dance. Inawea. Say, no pastor can touch my money. <laughs> Iwur. Where ti wen di ti wur koko. Iwur. Beski only quiet. Iwur. You know what I'm saying? When you back up in the choir, you have a good base, but stinginess. Stingy even to your own wife. Stingy to your children. When you are stingy to your wife, stingy to your children, stingy to everybody until you are stingy to yourself. Unatembea kutoka hapa mpaka Jado Town na una pesa ya fare. Unasema spandi, spandi. Unasafiri na bus kutoka hapa mpaka Uganda bila kukula hata biscuit. Brother, it is not good. Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. A man that has a problem loving himself. It's a dangerous man. You wear one in a wear until your boss gives you an in a wear as a gift when the company is closing in December. They have started, they have noted you are dangerous, you are stingy to yourself. So the company contributes in a wear to you. You are wicked. If heaven is not benefiting from you, you are not serving God. Serving God is a heaven benefiting from your life. Raise your hand and say, Lord, benefit from me. I didn't hear you. Say it again, my Father and my God. Please benefit from my life. Lord, please harvest some things from my life. May I become a blessing to people. Listen. So serving God is a heaven benefiting from your life. Last but not least, okay, second last, serving God means to work for God. To carry out tasks in the name of the Lord. To make efforts for God. To repeatedly do the same thing for God. Not once, then you complain. Repeatedly do the same thing for God. Paul said that at last there is a completion of what you guys had begun before. You do the same thing till you complete it. When will you stay in the ministry for 20 years? Doing the same thing for God. Do you know I'm still a member of the ministry where I was born again? We always say, what a genius pastor like Wangoza Kwatoba, would you always say? If you sit, you say, in a thousand little kanga up in the end out. You can't even remember where you went for a service last Sunday. It is repeatedly doing the same thing for God. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 12. Oh Lord. Look at this. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know and are established in the present truth, even though you know, for how long have you had me teach on serving God? This is not the first time. It is doing the same thing over and over for God. You are willing to do the same thing over and over for God. You preach, you teach till everybody feels like the whole, path, the whole place has caught what you are teaching. You give them one month, you go back to the same thing. You give them another two months, you go back to the same thing. You don't get tired. You are serving God. It is to be effective for God. It is to operate in accordance with the will of God. Don't just serve God anyhow. It's to operate in accordance with his will. Serving God is making a way for the kingdom. There has never been a major crusade in your village. 
you decide to sacrifice and bring a major meeting to your village. A place that no preaching has ever been done. You're making a way for the kingdom. God raises you and takes you to Geneva. You realize in the entire neighborhood, there's nothing like Christianity. Then you begin to labor and travail and begin to make a way for Christianity to come there. Serving God is making a way for the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, not only making a way for the kingdom, it, it is also being restless for God. Look at what Paul said. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from around verse number 25. It's being restless for God. I'm not using us as an example, but we have not rested. We came from Mombasa into a meeting, into a revival, next week into a conference, and on and on. It is being restless for God. That's what we mean serving God. Know that you can't even remember the last time you prayed. Paul said three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys, look at Paul speaking about journeys. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. 27. In weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Look at it from verse 25 in the message translation. The man was busy for God. Beaten by Roman rods three times. Pamel with rocks once. I've been shipwrecked three times. And he must in the open sea for a night and a day. In hard traveling, year in, year out. I've had to ford rivers, fend off robbers, struggle with friends, struggle with fowls. I've been at risk in the city, at risk in the country endangered by desert sun and sea storm and betrayed by those I thought were my brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor. Many a long and lonely night without sleep. Many a missed meal. Blasted by the cold. Naked to the weather. Look at verse 28. And that's not the half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches. The man was serving God. Good news translation. From verse 25. Raise your hands and say Lord that I may serve you. He said three times. I was sheep. I was whipped by the Romans. And once I was stoned. I have been in three shipwrecks. And once I spent 24 hours in the water. You, you spent one hour waiting for the pastor. You will be mad for three years. Paul was in the water 24 hours. You, you have been in the church bench for one hour. In fact, watching church television. Drinking church tea for free that you don't know where it came from. Then you have the guts to carry your mouth and sneeze like a pig going out. One day, haki. <laughs> Do you see how ungrateful we are? In my many travels, I've been in danger from floods and from robbers. In danger from my own people and from... They are your own people that are dangerous. Can I say this? There's a friendship that I see you pursuing with my blood brother that is not saved. I mark you. Every man of God has one brother who drinks. Who doesn't look like the gospel his brother is preaching. I post all these good things on Facebook. All these missions. All these videos you never like. I post mama's birthday. You never say happy birthday mama. My own birthday. Never happy birthday pastor. My brother who is not saved. 
post his birthday and you are there, happy birthday, bro. I'm praying for you, long life. Ah, uh -uh. you are a witch that we are watching. Something is pursuing you. Did I make a mistake? Do I make sense by what I'm saying? Let me ask a question. Have you ever noted such people in your own life? Have you ever noted them? They are dangerous people. Very dangerous. That you secretly went to visit my mother in the village. You left me here preaching. My own biological mother. You never greet me. You never talk to me. Then I see you post a photo on Facebook. You have taken a selfie with my mother. I will kill you. You are, you are dangerous. A man of God told me that a certain man of God took three of his members in the church to his village to see his biological mother. So he had the news. He called the man while the man was in his mother's house. The man did not pick his calls. He tried to reach out to the man. The man has never picked his calls. The three members the man went with to visit this pastor's mother left the church and became dangerous against that pastor. People are wicked. Who is this that is busy on your husband's post? You post, he doesn't like. You post, he doesn't comment. You post, he says nothing. But when your husband posts, ah, run for your life. This Facebook can speak many things. This Facebook you see. Mark everybody that since we began building that building, claims to be a member, none of that building's picture is on their page. Can I put it this way? I, the man of God, will post a message for people. They'll not like, they'll not comment, they'll say nothing, they are members. We'll not share the church video, we'll say nothing about it, and you that is a member, you'll post something, bro, you are speaking. He's not your brother. He's leading you somewhere. Be careful. Can I tell you this? You don't have to hate your father's enemies. But you don't have to befriend them either. Did you get that? Can I say this openly on Facebook? Don't hate your father's enemies. But don't befriend them either. Can I keep you safe in any ministry you attend? You are safe with anyone that is still celebrating that pastor. And that woman of God. You are safe with them. Any moment you note someone that used to celebrate your pastor. The wife was a great man of God. Then you note they changed. But they are trying to lean over to you. Seducing you through your post. This is powerful. This is great. This is beautiful. Welcome my sister. Run for your life. Let me say this. You write it down. Anything that dishonors what you honor. Will eventually teach you to dishonor the same. Because one day you will ask. There was a time you loved these people. What happened? I think nowadays you don't love them. Did something wrong happen? Then they tell you, thank you for asking. You know, some of you are new. Some of us have been around. Are you ready for what I'm about to tell you? I'm just telling you this to save you. Now listen. Do you know the price that was paid for you to sit here? Then now there is someone that wants to help you. Be careful. I repeat this. If you tolerate anyone that dishonors what you honor, eventually the same person will help you dishonor what you honor now. And dishonor is the beginning of loss. No matter how anointed a man is, when dishonor walks into your heart, he cannot help you. Okay, that's a by the way. But I know you are helped. Even those on Facebook, you are helped. I always say this and I repeat it. 
I share something, a flyer for a meeting and all that. There are those you know quickly they share it. They become part of it. The servant of God is teaching tonight. They share. Mark them when they stop sharing. It's not a must for them to share. But when they stop sharing is a language. Find out why. Did you know that the Bible encourages you to stay away from anyone that is dividing people? There are Christians that the scripture encourages you to see and turn away. They are not devil's agents. They are not bad people. But the scripture says when you see them, avoid them. Remind me, I'll show you. Listen, I always teach this. Staying under a grace and under a man that is graced requires too much sacrifice. How many of you work? You have a job. Wow. Listen. Did you know that you may make no mistake in that work? You may be okay. You may have everything needed. But there's someone your boss sees you in. And you begin to suffer. Is it true? Can I tell you this with all humility? It happens in church as well. Do you have some of your brothers and sisters that your own biological mother, this is your blood brother, but your own biological mother will warn you and say, ensure your brother doesn't go where you work. This is your mother. And I can also tell you as a father that if you want this grace to benefit you, watch people in between the lines. Don't just accept people that is my brother in the ministry, in the church. Watch their connection. Watch their commitment. Watch their true loyalty. Watch how true they are. And let me add this. If someone slaps your father, your biological father, I know you are a Christian and you are aware it will pain you. What do you do to your brother your blood brother who is so in love with that man that he can't let go the man who slapped your father. What do you do? You may not slap the man but you'll mark everyone that loves the man. Let me say this. Whoever is a friend of betrayers will soon betray you. Be careful with your best friend that is also a best friend to your ex-wife. People can disagree but can still be best friends. Mm. Mm. I don't know. That my wife, there's no trouble. You know, she was once my girlfriend. But now I'm married to you. We have children. It's just a friend. Women. Women! Are you here? Will you be comfortable when your husband tells you that this is just her ex-girlfriend? He's married to you. He comes back home. He pays school fees. You say, check my phone. I don't cheat. This was my ex-girlfriend. We are just friends. Women, will you be convinced? Eh? Okay. But I thought you have the love of God. And God wants us to love all. Sisi tuchezeka mwa chungaji, sisi wa jinga. How many of you got the message? Get it well. Before you run to any post to comment, find out their relationship with the grace that you respect. Mark the difference between those who are serving and those who are once serving. And find out why are they not serving. And protect your faith.
If someone I found taking tea in your house and I wipe my mouth and walk away. Hmm. I've been in this thing long enough <laughs> to tell you what I'm telling you. Even political parties that are building the same country. Kuna mahali ukunywe chai. Will you have a nice work? Holy communion, Baba. Because he came to save sinners. We end the na yom chezo konai. Anyway, allow me to close. Did you get the message tonight? Raise your hands and say, "I receive wisdom." Yes. Do you know even in ministry? Do you know the number of invitations I get every day? Do you know that despite the opulence of a church? They tell me we will do this, we will do this, we will honor you, blah, blah. Man of God, just come. There are many factors I will check before I accept to come. Listen. There is a place you preach in. Pastors, listen to me. It's not every open door that is an open door. Some open doors shut you for 10 years. I watch are you calling me to preach or you are calling me to make a statement? Because there are people who are good at fighting their enemies by calling particular people. So you have to ask those questions. There's a city you preach in. Just your troubles will begin because of the man you preached in his ministry. And we are all believers. When somebody will ask that man of God, then where is the love of God? These things were happening in the days of Paul. Love them. Some people is enough to love them silently. Sometimes love some people enough not to pick their calls. Out of love. Love some people enough that when they call you for coffee, you turn it down because you love them too much that you don't want their poison to be your poison. Listen. Someone has messed up the company property and the boss is firing him. He's given a letter and he walks out while arguing. And telling the boss, you'll see. I will shut down this company. And then you tell him, bro, I know you don't have hair. Please, let me just drop you. We are one another skipper. While your boss is watching. Are you safe? <clears throat> but you want to bring those things to church. Listen, there is no you in the office and you here. It's the same you. I repeat, God taught me how to enjoy grace by being careful. When I identify a man and I identify this man has grace that can help my life, I begin to watch his associations. I avoid what will pain him. I avoid people I know don't believe in him. I avoid people that may say what I don't want to hear. And I keep the grace. I've maintained the same pastor over the years. Tumaliza sasa. In fact, sometimes the person you are telling, you know, hey, man, man of God, blah, blah. Hmm. There are people you mentioned on the door. And it is still love. In my many travels, I've been in danger from floods, from robbers, in danger from my own people. <laughs> Every Now, be careful with anyone that comes to the company where you work. From your boss's village. And say, in the village, the offense and our offense. In fact, I can picture. 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 Anatafuta kazi. Walicheza kalongo na boss. Anatafuta kazi in the company. 
He has come for an appointment or an interview. The way he's talking about your boss. I know the mother. I know the family. In fact, one of their sisters is mother. I mean, I go, I go, I go, I go, I if you want to protect your job even if that particular one has the best purpose deny him the job because when he is done number one thing he's going to do he's going to help you destroy your relationship with your boss there are things he's going to tell you that are going to change the way you look at your boss and your boss is going to notice the change and when the rubber meets the road, can I tell you something? While he's going, even you that you spoiled, you are going with him. Someone will take your place. Why? Because you didn't discern people connected to your boss that know him too much that are unsafe for you. One of my resolutions in life, listen to me, anybody who calls himself my son. I say it, no one will ever tell me about my father. I seek to know my father by myself. I will never follow a man that someone has to give me information to know the man. I said one time to one of the sons here, it is dangerous to follow a man that has not been revealed to you. To follow a man that you are looking for information to believe him. Elijah was revealed to Elisha. That's why he never lost it to the end. But not those other guys. It is tough. Now look at this. Danger from my own people and from the Gentiles. There have been dangers in the cities. Dangers in the wilds. Dangers on the high seas. And dangers from false friends. There has been work and toil. I often have gone without sleep. I've been hungry and thirsty. I've often been without enough food, shelter, or clothing. Verse 28. And not to mention the other things. Every day, I'm under the pressure of my concern for all the churches. What is serving God in conclusion? Raise your hands and say, Lord, give me grace to serve. Serving God, ladies and gentlemen... Is toiling for God. It is labor for God. What Rufena and Trufosa did in Romans chapter 16 and verse number 12 is labor for God. Laboring for God. Look at it. Great Trufena and Trufosa. Other names that we don't use today. Trufena and Trufosa. Who have labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved passes. Who labored much in the Lord. What is serving God? Serving God is laboring for God. Straining for God. Struggling for God. It is what Paul said in Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus. In other words, becoming God's slave. And I finish with Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 19. What is serving God? Serving God is traveling that men may know God. Don't think I woke up in the morning and the, an angel of the Lord wrote these notes and said go and read them before people. Paul says, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. The first time he labored, they were born again. The second time he began to labor, he labored until the life of God began to show in the lives of men. When you see a beautiful congregation, people looking brilliant with iPads and tabs, enjoying the word. Who can mention scripture want to shout, wow. Yani people eating the word, what want to see mama? You can tell they are enjoying Christianity. Don't think it just happens. A man has labored until people have loved the truth. A good example is Pastor Chris Yakilome. 
You see how attentive those people are when he's teaching. He has labored until Christ has been formed in them. People don't just follow Christ. This is why I say to ah, nilisimama, nibuana mefanya nisimame. I'll show you there are men who pray for you to stand. There are men who labor for you to find truth that you stand on. Kama ulikuwa msharati, all of a sudden msharati kaenda. Ukasema nilipata ukweli kaniacha. Don't think it just happened. It is labor. Serving God is laboring, working hard to find something to feed men with. Respect people who preach over 10 sermons a week and every sermon is fresh. It is not a sermon they are giving. It is labor. It is work. It is travail. It's one thing to find the scripture. It's another thing for that scripture to produce life. Labor. Why do we sleep in church on Saturday? It's because we honor what is going to go on on this altar. You are preparing to form and touch lives. You are building a part of them that cannot be seen. You are battling with the strongholds of their lives. If I show you the video of how that woman was behaving, someone that normally came to pick preachers, all of a sudden, something else came. Those are the things we are dealing with. It is labor, Baba. Next week, 30 days of fasting and prayer begins. What for? To buy a car, to buy a house, is labor that the presence of God may rest on men. Respect people who labor. Don't only watch someone's on Facebook and on YouTube looking for what to criticize. You don't know the labor behind what you are watching. You don't know the work, the weight. Give it to me in the Good News Translation. What is serving God? It's laboring for God. Ndiyo mtu anaitu wa mtumishi wa mungu. Anatumikia mungu. My dear children, once again, just like a mother in childbirth, I feel the same kind of pain for you until Christ's nature is formed in you. Do you know there were days in the morning when I would go <coughs> and thick clot of blood will fall on the sink. Do you know there are people whose lives were cut short because of fasting? Do you know how dangerous it is? Do you know why prayer affects the way a man looks like? Do you know what it means to pray for eight hours? Do you know the impact it has on the body? Then you walk into that arena, something hits you, and the generational struggle of 25 years, you get a job with a salary of two million. Then one time, an offering is being received and the man of God says, how come many can give a million? Then you get offended and walk away and brand the same ministry. Money chasing churches. You don't know what you have done to yourself. Things don't just happen. They are made to happen. He has been here for the last three days. This is a pastor praying. Day and night then a member in that church will rise to fight him. My dear children, when a man labors like that, he becomes a father. Your relationship with the minister of God is that of a son and a father. A daughter and a father. Respect labor. The reason I bless men of God, they labor. They don't sleep in the night. Speaking to things that are fighting people. That your Sunday pastor, ilipo toka, kila kitu ilibadilika. It doesn't just happen. This labor. My dear children, once again, just like a mother in child, The pain is like the pain of a mother in childbirth. When someone you have raised, you picked from nothing, you cleaned up. You've taught Christ. You've taught. Begins to rise against you and humiliate you on Facebook. You feel the pain of a woman that has been insulted by her own blood child. And that's why it doesn't go far. 
And that's why repercussions are deadly. Because this is what it is. That's why I don't attack men of God. I respect labor. Do you know you labor over people? To make them become? Now a concert is coming here. I was telling mama, which renowned musician do I bring to affect our people? I want someone they look at and they tremble. You know what it will cost? To pay his hotel. To pay his flight. To take care of him. To respect and honor him. Then he will come and one of the musicians here will take a picture with him. Not knowing the cost. Not knowing who has suffered for it. And then tomorrow when he feels he has arrived, begin to call him minus people that brought him. And tell him, you know you came, I just wanted to tell you something about our church. If that man is stupid, he listen to you. And let me tell you this. When you attack and fight anybody that has ever given you life, you are fighting yourself. Never fight anybody you have ever eaten from them. You will destroy what they made in your life. That's why you don't fight your former father. You don't fight your former church. You don't fight your former ministry. You don't fight the first boss that lifted you. Even if they are wrong, even if you have every reason to fight them, run from the battle. Ukichoma sahani ulikulia, umechoma maini yako mwenye. There's a reason why people die with incurable diseases. You can't burn a granary you ate from and accumulate funds in the future. You can't pull down the company that gave you your first job. Raised you to be who you are now. And you rise and use insiders and pull down and build your own. There's a reason men end badly. Honor labor. Respect labor. When people have labored, respect it. Respect people that have labored over your life. Just like a mother in childbirth. I feel the same kind of pain for you. Until Christ's nature. People don't just become what the word of God says. Someone labors. Give me this pastor. I close with it. Our brother Epaphras. Always laboring fervently in prayer for you. That you may stand in the will of God. The reason I teach people honor that congregation you are sitting under is because the, the, the prayers that, that that man has prayed over you is the reason your marriage is standing. Is the reason some demonic stuff are diverted in your life. Honor labor. Honor labor. You know why your mother will open her mouth and speak something and it will stick and it will destroy you. God remembers mothers who carried children on their back while painting a building. When a woman is painting, na mefunga mtoto kwa mgongo. Na huyo mtoto awe daktari siku moja. Na tukane mama yaki. Ata jidunga mwenyewe shindano enye tamuwa. The reason our parents hold so much authority over our lives are the insults they suffered to protect us. Wengine Baba hako alitukanu wa matusi ya kufa kutukanu. Akienda kulio sifukuzwe shule. Alichota yu matusi. Alafu uje weo mtukani. You can't survive. You never know the blows that men have received to make you who you are. Let me say this with all humility. It's easy to stand on a pulpit like this. Everything set. Sound set. And make noise. You'll understand when you have to build something from nothing. What it takes. The pain it takes. The labor it takes. The fight that it takes. To stand. The last one. Epaphras who is one of you. A born servant. He was serving of Christ. Greets you. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Listen, people don't just stand in the will of God. 
A man was praying. A man was laboring in prayer. Message translation. Hmm. Epaphras, who is one of you, says, hello. What a trooper he has been. He has been tireless in his prayers for you. Praying that you will stand firm, mature and confident in everything that God wants you to do. You don't just stand. A man is praying. Lord, all the days of my life, may I not mock the prayers that keep me. There are prayers. You see, as much as I pray, listen, you have not prayed until you have joined all night on Saturday. Prayer here. On top of my prayers, I know it doesn't just take my prayers for me to stand. As I'm preaching here, there's a prayer meeting going on. There are men and women on their belly praying for me. Yesterday, there was a prayer meeting in Zambia and Uganda and Western and Eastern. Men and women. Over 200 people were praying for over two hours. It takes the labor of men for a man to stand. Give me this and pray for us that God may give us utterance. There are things you only do because God wants to destroy you. Or else there are people you can't rise against. There are people you can't even humiliate. You can't even try it. You can't attempt it. It's dangerous. Look at this. And pray for us that utterance may be given to us. Paul speaking. The New King James Version. Pray for us that utterance may be given to us. Pray for us also. Pick it from 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul said, pray for me. So you don't just, you are not just yapping because you are a prayer warrior. There are people praying for you. And not only praying for you, there are men that have bathed you. What does it mean to serve God, it means to bath people. Bath people. Before this life is over, I pray that all of you here will bath other people. Can I hear an amen? I pray that all of you that are watching me will bath one, two, three, four, five people that have been born under your ministry. I pray that there will be 100 people that have been bathed by you, bathed by your prayer, bathed by your labor, bathed by your persistence before God. That is what it means to serve God. Ever since you were born again, how many have you brought to the kingdom? Have you witnessed? Have you ever led someone to Christ? Kama huko tu. Kamuka zvi doa, doa, napokea doa, doa, napokea doa. Wait, 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 wait. We give to God, we go home. Those of you online, Let's serve God with our substance. I have three more to mention. The Lord giving me grace when I'm done with the Kitui mission. I will address how do we serve God. I've shared with you what serving God is. But how do we serve God? So I'll come to that. God helping me then later on. I'll teach you on the benefits of serving God. Kuna vitu kita kuona. Tumikia mungu. Kuna protection ukita kuona. Tumikia mungu. Kuna vitu zingine hazifanyiki kwa njia yote. Ni njia ya kutumikia mungu. Peke, only those that serve can see those things. Then I will share. How do we serve? 
This Sunday, remind me, the protocol, the entire protocol, the ushering, and all that team will have to appoint one one leader that will stand here and invite people to their departments. Well, this is our protocol. This is what we deal with. You want to join us? We are meeting there after service. Everybody must find a place of service in this ministry. Nobody will be a bench warmer. There is no crown in heaven for yawning after service. Yawning in the service and say, Amen! Amen! There is no crown for saying Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? My Baba, Niongoze, Mahala Pangu. You must find a place. There are more than enough. Remind me that this Sunday that has to happen. The other Sunday will be another department. Like that, like that. Till everyone finds their place. Are you good with karate? Taekwondo? We have a department for you. <laughs> Don't waste that talent. Are you able to climb trees and jump on top of the tent? Don't waste that talent. Crusades are coming. We may need horses. And we may need people who can ride horses. Don't jump on a cow. Come on a talent, come on you. Kuna mahali tatoshe. Bonus fuel. Unajua kuna nguvu fulani unasikianga na umeokoka na unaomba. Inaweza kuwa na mahali pa matumizi. So we'll give you a department while we watch you. If it is a night running spirit, we'll rebuke it. But if it is of God, it will find a place of service. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then we'll give the music team, the, the, the two, our two choirs, we'll give them the chance to also come and invite people to their departments. And after that, you see, invite what to grow. I'm dealing with the case now of someone in another church is asking me what do I do because in their church the leader in that department has declared war. yes they invite people to that department but the leader has declared war. nobody must become better than the leader so I'm a same pastor wakikuja huku wanakongu wa vitu wa wanatoroka alafu wanasema na anointing kali bada chapata mtu wa kupokea so mimi ndiyo nimevumilia pastor sayami ya muata ni huwa I must leave the department for her spirits of witchcraft You'll be invited very well to a department. Ukifika uko. Sema, hey, pastor, niliangalia. Eka sema, wacha niabudu mungu kwa upole na niende kwangu. While God wants you to serve him. Vita inaeza anza hata mmeenda tu witnessing. Umeenza kuwitness ya mtu wakangu kachini mashetani ya natoka. Mukaenda kuingine teno kanza hivi akuchini mashetani ya natoka. Then the head of the visitation team or the evangelistic team say, eh, hmm. Alafu naona the next time anajaribu pia, mashetani haitoke. Trouble has begun. In the next evangelistic outreach, watakikisha uongei na watu. Wakikuzuhia hiyo ya church. Na usha gunua mungu na kutumia. Declare riot everywhere. Sunday, you have carried your 20 people that you have delivered. You brought them to church. You must serve God despite the wickedness of the leader in that department. Because wickedness is there. There are preachers that if they hear fununu mungo metumia mchungaji ya kuchini yao. Wey! What have I not seen? What is that? A father wants the children to rise. Now, kiona wame kuwa powerful. Wafungulia makanisa. Mbona sifiwe. Kanisa pia utake kuwa fungulia. Powerful pia, wasikue powerful. Kubarikiwa pia, wasibarikiwa. Kuinuka pia, wasinuka. Iyo ni rogani yu. It's a spirit of witchcraft. Jaya mbinguni ni nyembamba. <laughs> Jaya hiyo ni nyembamba yendaye uzimani. You have your offering, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for speaking to us. We resolve to serve you with our all 
and with our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Shalom. Next week, of course, next week the service will be on. One of our pastors will be teaching. And of course, it will be since we are fasting and praying. June fasting. How many are joining the June fasting and prayer? Wangapi mukondania June fasting and prayer? Kama ujoin nata kuliza saimbe le watu mbona ujoin fasting? Are we are you a wizard? So we are fasting, and next week will be a great time. Will be a very great time next week, uh, because as we minister in Kitui.